Hey guys, so I'm here today to film a foundation review and wear test on the Bite Beauty Changemaker Foundation. I got a sample from Sephora because when it comes to high-end foundations, I always get a sample because they're fucking expensive and like I don't want to have to buy it and then return it and then Sephora has to fucking damage it out anyways, so I just get a sample. Um, this foundation just launched recently, I'm pretty sure in January, end of January, and I saw Samantha ravendahl has been raving about it since like last year, and I just saw Robbie DeChrissy do a review on it, and so I wanted to try it out myself, but I, I'm not a full coverage ass bitch, I think I'm full coverage ass bitch, but then when I try out like actual full coverage foundations, I'm like, these look cakey and gross on my skin. I'm more of like a medium buildable, medium to full coverage kind of girl. So before I get into this video, you should subscribe to my channel every Tuesday and Thursday and I will have a Fabletics video, not sponsored, coming up either before this or after this, I haven't decided yet, but yeah, there's a Fabletics review coming with my fat ass and let me tell you, squat proof who? So this is full title called the Bite Beauty Change, Ma Change Maker Supercharged Micellar Foundation. It comes in 32 shades. It is 52 Canadian dollars and it comes in a squeeze tube packaging. I like a squeeze tube, although I feel like it's really easy to go overboard with the squeeze tube because like I find the pump sometimes like is like, okay, like in my brain, I'm like one pump, got it. But if it's a squeeze tube, I just go ham and put too much foundation on. Um, so this foundation says it is a clean, long wearing foundation with gentle micellar technology. I don't know what that is. That mimics skin texture for a natural flawless finish. It's medium coverage, natural finish, liquid for normal dry combination and oily skin. It's vegan, cruelty free and gluten free and says that 100% of users agreed it felt fresh. 97% agreed it was easy to blend. Like what? what kind of a stat is that? Who are the other 3%? Um, and 97% of users agree that it was applied smoothly. This is a terrible study to include in here. <laughs> These things mean nothing. Um, so this is one of the clean beauty products at Sephora. I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't believe the clean beauty hype. Everything is a chemical and I think clean beauty is just kind of capitalizing on fear marketing and making us afraid of everything in our skincare and everything is gonna give us cancer. Straight up, that's how I feel about clean beauty. <laughs> so that's that on that. I'm in the shade L15, which is the third lightest shade, or third from the lightest shade. It is fair light with neutral undertones. L10 looked a little too light for me. Oh wait, actually, hold on. I don't understand why Sephora never puts shit in order on here. The first foundation color they have listed is M84, medium. So actually this is the second lightest shade. So there's L10 and then L15, which makes sense. So I got L15, um, I'm gonna insert a clip now of me applying it and then we'll come back after and talk about this face. Okay, so I just have a little sample of the Bite Beauty foundation. They actually give me a pretty decent sample. It's a pretty thick foundation just from kind of looking at the consistency in here. I am in the shade L15 as I mentioned. Um, oh, you know what? I didn't prime my face yet. Hold on. I'm just gonna use uh, the Smashbox primer water because it's like a pretty basic primer. Okay, so we're just gonna... Yeah, that's pretty thick. Um, I wanna see how much... Uh, I guess... Okay, let's see how this does. This shade might be a little bit too dark for me, but the one lighter than this looked too light. Um, did that do anything for my face? I always forget to look at like what coverage the foundation is supposed to be before I put them on. So I'm like, um, coverage where? Like it has a nice finish to the skin, but I'm not seeing anything being covered. So let's layer her up, which has the dangerous side effect of potentially being cakey, but I'll take it if it means I get coverage. Oh, 
Okay, so while yes, this has a beautiful finish to it, like I really like the skin-like finish, um, I'm not really seeing any coverage. So here we are up close. As you can see, here is all of my redness. Discoloration. Um, it's not settling into my fine lines on my forehead, which is kind of wild, but it's also not covering anything. When I saw Ravia Christie do this review, she said that it kind of got better throughout the day. So I'm going to finish my face. I'm just going to conceal under my eyes and we will see what we see, but I don't think this is it for me. So this is what we look like after putting on our face. I set this with my MAC Marinelline Skin Finish Natural in Light Plus because it did feel a little tacky still on the skin. Um, I only concealed under my eyes, so everything else is just my face. The MAC Marinelline Skin Finish Natural applies a smidge of coverage, but not really, and I apply it very lightly. Um, and yeah, let's, let's look up close. So as you can see, my chin is not covered. Uh, I'm getting a little bit creasing in this area here. Upper lip looking a little funky. Like there's just like you can see, like I'm okay with you being able to see my freckles, but I want all like the like, these aren't all freckles. This is like hyperpigmentation that needs to go. On the nose, it looks a little gross, but I find that most foundations look gross on my nose and this is the forehead. I will say it's not settling into my forehead lines as bad as most foundations do and it does have like this is this sheen on the forehead is nice it has like this nice natural kind of glow overall i don't think i would call this a medium coverage foundation this wasn't medium coverage to me at all i would say maybe like a light medium like it's now that it's on my face i'm like you know it's okay enough to wear and it might be a nice I always say like this might be a nice summer foundation because it does feel lightweight on the skin. It's not heavy. Although it's thick, it blended out really easily, but it kind of blended out into nothing. This might be one of those foundations that applies better with a brush, but I'm just going to be honest with you, I don't use brushes. Um, with a brush, I have to wash it so often or else it gets really streaky. And although I have to wash my beauty blender just as often, I have like 10 of them so it doesn't matter and a beauty blender you wash it you can use it right away whereas a brush you have to like wash it right after you do your makeup and ain't nobody got time for that so i'm just not a brush person i'm sorry but with the beauty blender this shears out a lot and i wouldn't call it medium coverage it's sitting on my skin okay it has like i said a nice natural finish if you like a light medium coverage this might be right up your alley like when samantha ravindal was raving about it i was like ooh, like i love samantha ravindal but her like cream Makeup is not my scene. <laughs> so I thought I might not like it, but then Robbie DeChristy liked it and like she is a full coverage ass bitch. So we'll see how it wears throughout the day. I know in her video it like got better throughout the day. So I'm interested to see if it kind of like melts into my skin a little bit maybe and like warms up or something. But right now I wouldn't pay $52 for this foundation if I'm being honest. And it's a bummer because I kind of wanted to pay $52 for this foundation. I have some Sephora gift cards burning a hole in my pocket from Christmas. But this, um, but I don't want to say, I don't want to shit on this foundation just because it's not full coverage enough for me. But I, with a medium, when, when something that's medium coverage, I expect it to be medium buildable and like cover me. This to me isn't that. So I'm going to give it a wear test. Um, it is... 12 o'clock so i've probably had this foundation on for a bit but we'll call the check in time 12 o'clock and i'll do a 10 hour wear test so i'll be back in a couple hours to show you how it wears and we'll we'll see what we see okay it is 5 22 would have been in here at five but the cat was sleeping on me and when a cat sleeps on you you don't get to move i don't make the rules um <laughs> When I watched Robbie Chrissy's video and she said like it got better throughout the day, I thought she was a liar, but she's not because I just stood. Well, once I got outside and I was in the mirror at first, I was like, oh, maybe this does look better. But then I was looking at myself, my husband and I went out for lunch and I was looking at myself in the mirror and I was like, I look kind of like matte. And like that could be because I did set it, but I set my foundation all the time. And then usually once I use a setting spray after it just kind of like evens it out and it's not really matte anymore. But now that I'm looking at myself, 
there's like a nice <coughs> there's like a nice glow to the foundation I mean I it wore off a little bit on my chin but that's mostly because I had tacos for lunch so there is no way to gracefully eat a taco shit happens but like other than that I actually kind of like it now so you can see like the beautiful sheen on my face um we still need some more coverage over here tbh um and that's the forehead i mean it has sunk into my fine lines a little bit but like not too bad i will say four or five hours in general the foundation looks good like i'm not mad at it i do wish there was more coverage it does kind of look a little heavy around the nose but like that's why 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 do noses act like this why can't they just take foundation like everybody else it looks a little heavy on my chin but like also kind of nice i am getting some settling in my dimple but like very subtly this is like a really useless check-in because like i'm very torn it's been five hours and i will say like i'm not I don't hate it. I actually kind of like it. And I think that if you are a medium foundation type of girl, I would definitely recommend this. I think overall, like I, I don't want to give a final synopsis right now, but I'm not sure if it's something like I said, I would spend $52 on because it's just not my personal ideal foundation, but I do want to play around with it some more and see what I think of it. Cause I kind of like it now. Like I've got the nice like sheen on the forehead, on the chin. <laughs> this is my five hour check in and I don't know what to tell you guys cause I don't know how I feel. But for now, this is what we look like. I mean, wear wise, it's totally normal. I do think it has kind of like warmed up to my skin a bit to make it a little bit, I don't wanna say more coverage, but something I like more. So yeah, we're gonna give it another five hours and see what happens by 10 p.m. because right now I like it this is a weird foundation what up party people it is now 10 30 so this has been on my face for 10 and a half hours um right now we're not looking ideal I'm getting a little cakey it looks a little cakey on my chin forehead looks fine really um again it has been ten and a half hours so i don't expect miracles from this but i don't love the way it looks so here we are up close and personal you can see it looks a little heavy here it has kind of rubbed off my chin i ate dinner so you know that's something that happens as you can see it's kind of settled into my dimple my cat's trying to get inside a bag on the floor um I said before that like around my nose looks kind of gross. Forehead looks nice though. I mean like the sheen is still there. It just it looks a little heavy after 12 hours. I did put on about two layers of it. Part of it could be that I layered the foundation to kind of make it more full coverage. Overall, it's not a bad foundation. It lasted okay. It's not the most long wear foundation, but I think if you have I would definitely say this is more for normal to dry skin because of the finish, the texture of it. It's just not really for uh, oily skin, especially just like how it's lasted on my skin personally. But at the same time, if you like a lighter medium coverage foundation, I think the finish is beautiful. Um, I think it looks really nice on the skin. Just for me personally, I don't know if it's the best uh, like it's not the kind of coverage I'm looking for, but other than that, I like the foundation. Um, although I wouldn't call it medium coverage if we're being honest. So I'm probably gonna play around with it a little bit and see if I can get some more cover with a brush. But if I'm being honest, I'm I'm literally never gonna use a brush. I'm I'm just not. Editing Kayla here. So I did try this the next day with a brush and I got minimally more coverage, but I did feel like I needed to put so much more on that like it just felt cakey. So 
to me, this foundation just isn't for me. I just wanted to kind of let you guys know that I did try it with a brush, even though like I hate brushes, but I really wanted to like this foundation. So I was trying to make it work for me, but a brush didn't really give me any more coverage than a sponge. And I think that's just because the foundation is not a full coverage foundation or like a medium full coverage foundation. So that's that on that. So that's what I think about the uh, Bite Beauty Change Maker Micellar Foundation. Um, it's a decent foundation. A lot of great foundations have come out of the drugstore lately. For me personally, if I'm looking for a dewy foundation, it's the Fenty Hydrating Foundation. Also recently, I tried out the Revolution um, Conceal and Hydrate, uh, and it's like a drugstore foundation, it was like $9. Absolutely loved that one. So I personally wouldn't pay the heavy duty price tag for this, but I mean, that's your decision to make. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know down below what you think about the foundation, if you've tried it, what you think about it on me. Um, and yeah, so thank you guys for watching and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.